come back. Just a few, few, few comments and strokes here. I've spent a little bit of time doing details. Let me zoom in for you. Here's the most intense action right there. A couple taillights and headlights. We'll talk perhaps later about how to paint taillights <laughs> and traffic lights, colored lights that are shining and white lights as well. Um, I know the glare is still pretty bad, but there, that gives you a pretty good idea of what the painting looks like. Now let me paint just a little bit and talk about some of my mindset, some of my thinking <laughs> while I'm doing this final layer. I've used the expression many times earlier in the painting process. I say, you want to create a lot of chaos in the underpainting so that you have something to play with, so that you have something to respond to in the overpainting. I'm not sure overpainting is a word, but we're using it as one, okay? <laughs> you know what I mean. And this is certainly overpainting. Now, one of the things I do, and I've already done quite a bit of it, but um, at this point, I want to introduce um, some intense color. I've already done that somewhat, but the question is, well, how do you know, where do you do that? I'm, and I'm trying to find an example. Um, most of this area, let's, let's look at this area right here and I'll zoom in for you so you can see. Let's look at this area. It's basically an area of pavement. And by the way, almost all, well not almost, all of this area down here, except for a little bit of reflection of headlights, um, is untouched. I, I did one swoop of earlier in the fuzz section. I did one stroke of um, horizontal light. But other than that, this whole area is essentially untouched. I'm going to add a little bit of light right there and right there, as if the, the reflection of the headlights is catching a little bump in the road. Same thing right here and right there. Okay, now I want to look at this. See this yellow gold kind of area right there? That's a good example of a place where I, over here now, I'm mixing up, I am mixing up an opaque version of that color yellow gold and I'm going to come in here and put on just a little bit of it right there and that's it now and I'm going to do a little bit more of that to demonstrate really really what I'm talking about now I want to fix up this car a little bit and do some drawing there um, let's do a little bit more again some yellow ochre and white um, here's another bright spot. So I'm just going to make it brighter. In other words, the underpainting is telling me where to put paint, where to put color. Uh, and I don't want to do too much because it's getting to the bottom of the painting. But I could come in here. Let's mix up some white and ultramarine blue. And uh, a little bit of orange. It needs to be a little bit... What I'm doing essentially is trying to match, in this case, uh, this color or this color with an opaque, brighter, slightly brighter color. But the painting is telling me exactly where to put these bits of color. Does that make sense? It's not something I have to make up, as the expression goes, out of whole cloth. Uh, the painting is already telling me where to paint these colors. Now, here's... In, there are a number of things that make this work. One of which is, uh, one of the laws of painting, um, is that our eyes get a kick, our eyes, really our brain of course, but our eyes get a kick out of being fooled by what's on top of what. So when I come in here with a color that's very much like the color that's in the underpainting, but now it's overpainting, our brain gets a little momentary flutter of confusion we have to look kind of close before we can figure out what's on top of what. And believe it or not, even though in most of life, confusion is a bad thing, in visual art, confusion is actually a good thing. Now, a certain degree of confusion, huh? not tons of, oh, that's enough down there. I've almost done too much of that. I'm going to stop there. Now, I see another place, here. actually something slightly different. Let me zoom in to this, these purple bits. Um, this is a r good example of I mixed up one color on my brushes 
and went around and put this purple here, 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 and here. <laughs> That's about six too many here's, right? So the solution is to come back with a slightly lighter version of what's already there. It's, so right now it's kind of a, a pale lavender and come back and if it's too dotty, too doinky, then you can smear it. I don't use al I don't use um, uh, cadmiums or cobalt so that I'm freer to paint with my fingers. And now that I've done one layer of lighter, lighter violet, uh, lighter uh, um, lavender, I can come back and do even another bit of slightly lighter. Okay, so now that purple area, I have no idea what that represents. I have no idea what that's supposed to be. What is that purple back there? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Nobody knows. Doesn't matter. Um, same thing is happening up here at the base of this building. Let me raise you up again. Right. Hang on. I got a gooseneck here that I try to get to behave for you. Okay, right here, see? Several bits of purple, whoops, or lavender that are all the same shade. That's a problem. But it's an easy fix. You just mix up a, a color that's slightly brighter than that and, and come and put it here. Now, again, in my laws of painting, I'm going to talk quite a bit about um, it's almost always a good idea when you're in the opaque phase, the opaque stage of painting, which... For me, it's only the last layer. For many traditional painters, it's the entire process is opaque. <laughs> but I don't paint that way. And uh, don't feel sorry for me. All the great masters before 80, 1890 painted like me. Painted with this layers of transparent color and opaque at the very end. Rembrandt, etc. Okay, so this there was a lot of blue here that was all the same color. I just added variety by adding lighter, not darker. That would be disastrous. Now here, there's a row of, can you see that? No, oh, let me move you. Okay. Here, there's a row of kind of raspberry plum colored stuff happening. It's too much of the same color. It looks like the artist, which of course I did, mixed up a batch of this and went boom, 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 which of course is exactly what I did. But it looks like it. That's the, about four too many booms. So easy fix, though. You mix up the same color, just a slightly brighter version of it, and come and hit it again. Now, and if there's too many of those, then you simply match up a lighter version again and come and put it on top of that. It's almost always a good idea to put um, a, a little bit of slightly lighter color than what's already there. Now, I think one of the last things I'm going to do, this is unusual, an unusual place for me to finish, but it looks to me like one of the last things I'm going to do on this painting is come in with some pale green, very unusual place for me to end up, pale green, and look for just a few bits of green that are already pretty bright that need just a little bit, see, that's too bright. The principle is it needs to be just a little brighter than it is. And that was too bright. So let me come in here with something a little bit darker. Lighter than what's there. That's probably good enough. Uh, maybe a little bit up here too. And then smear it so it's not so hard. I don't want too many hard edges. In fact, I'm going to smear this as well. And just a tiny bit more, maybe, let me zoom out now, way up here in the corner, a little bit of lighter green than what's already there. Ah, my, I am, I am a sucker for dots. I really am a sucker for dots of paint, so I really have to guard against that. In fact, I'm, I'm a little worried that the painting overall is a little bit too dotty as it is. I reserve the right to come back with a fan brush and mess up some of this stuff if I think that's what's needed. But other than that, I'm going to call this finished. Okay, there you go. That's the finished painting. Let me try to get some better lighting. Uh, City of Raleigh from the north. Yes, here, again, here's the photograph. 
<laughs> to give you some idea how much fiction there is in my painting. There's the photograph, there's an earlier painting, and here's my latest painting. So in my second painting, I got even more fantastical than in the first one. That is not a busy thoroughfare that you're looking at. That's a boring parking lot. <laughs> a boring parking lot through the lens of an artist. Anyway, that is it for adventure number 243. Hope that is in helpful to you. Uh, you can go back and watch all, what is it, 14, 13 layers? And uh, maybe learn something. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks for your comments. I'll hope to get back to them all as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>